Um, so welcome everybody. Um, I'm Professor Hahn. I am one of the advisors for the Viking Vitals um, Health Club and we're so glad you're all here tonight. Um, I am joined tonight by Caitlin Chow, um, who's our club president. This would not be possible without Caitlin. Um, and then I've got um, two former students who I taught in CUM3 at Long Beach City College um, years ago, um, Atwana Matthews and Courtney Westmoreland, her last name changed. Life has happened to these two since I last had you in class, um, marriage, kids, all that good stuff, I think. Um, so anyways, they're here um, as relatively recent grads um, or very recent grads, um, just to kind of be able to talk to you about um, what their nursing paths have been like so far. Um, and then after them at 6.30, we'll have um, a, uh, an acquaintance of mine, Ardell from St. Mary's, who started as an RN at LBCC and is maybe 20 or so years into his career now. Um, and he's in healthcare administration, way up at the top at St. Mary's Medical um, Center. So kind of give you two perspectives, um, what it's like coming fresh out of school and then what it might be like you know, 20 years from now um, down the road. So um, I'm just gonna go back and forth between the two nurses. And like I said a moment ago, if you have questions from the audience, pop them into the chat and maybe Caitlin, you can keep an eye on those for me too and kind of condense them down. Um, but go ahead and give us the, I don't know, three minute <laughs> story of your, of your life kind of heading up to how did you decide to be a nurse? Um, what did that look like? And what have you done in the last few years? Um, so Atwana, you go ahead and then Courtney after that. I realize that's an impossible request, a three minute life mm -hmm. story, but um, go ahead. Atwana. Sure. Um, so uh, let's see. I think me deciding to go to nursing, um, to become a nurse was a culmination of my experiences. Um, I had two family members, my mother and my grandmother that have chronic illnesses and I would frequently be taking them to the hospital. And in those experiences, we met um, phenomenal nurses and not so phenomenal nurses. And it's really the not so phenomenal nurses that really marked me and wanted me to, helped me to uh, come to that decision to be a nurse. And um, some of the things we experienced while being in the care of the not so um, good nurses was just like cultural incompetence. That's a big thing. Right now, nationally, there's only maybe about 6% black nurses across the, um, the nation. And um, I wanted to be a part of change. I just wanted to go in and um, give care to everyone the way that I wanted to, um, my family to be cared for. So that was really what led me to be a nurse. And um, so I applied to Long Beach City. I didn't get in the first time. Even with really good grades, um, I actually had a 4.0 when I applied. I didn't get in, I was distraught. But um, the second time I applied, I got in. Um, I was managing working at the same time and maybe about two semesters in, I decided that I just wanted to um, go full in, just dedicated to it and I quit working. My husband, I got married a semester into nursing um, school and um, he was okay with it went I'm sorry my little my little guys <laughs> um, so I finished nursing school um, seven months pregnant I was seven months pregnant when I finished oh. so instead of going right into the field I decided uh, just to continue with my BSN um, so I can stay home with him um, and I took my I graduated December 2018 I took my NCLEX uh, a month after he was born I was just tired. I didn't want to take it right away. So I took it a month after he was born um, and then finished my, um, finished my, or continue with my BSN. And then I just finished it this spring. I've been doing a lot of volunteer work and I just finally accepted my, um, my first position as a um, tele nurse on the, at Little Company of Mary in Torrance, Providence Little Company of Mary. Um, Yay. Yeah, I'm very excited to start. So um, in uh, respect, I've only used my license as a RN vaccinator. I am a part of the Medical Reserve Force of Long Beach. Um, I do the flu clinics. I do um, this whole year I've been doing the COVID clinics, giving um, 
the vaccines and the boosters. I actually have a shift this weekend, but I'm, I try to do that a couple times a month to just, you know, feel like I'm using my um, my license, stay sharp with some skills, and um, yeah, that's where I'm at now. Ultimately, I do find myself on a labor and delivery unit while I was on um, in school and doing my rotations. I really fell in love with labor and delivery, even through having my own child it made me fall in love with it even more. So ultimately I do find myself on a labor and delivery unit and ultimately wanting to become a midwife. Um, but right now this is step one and I'm excited to start January 31st. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, so that's it. <laughs> awesome, thank you Atwana. I love that this is step one. And I think, I mean, you're years ahead of our students here even so. Each step one feels like, oh man, this is impossible. And you yeah. are 10 step ones through <laughs> with yeah. some kids to, to add. Just one all foot that. ahead of the other. Just keep going. Awesome. So Courtney, go ahead. Tell us your story, please. Yes. Hello, everybody. Um, so I started at Long Beach City in 2011, which was right out of high school. And I knew right away I wanted to do nursing. And it took me four years just to get all my prerequisites done so I felt like it was never going to end and I'm sure those of you that are pre-nursing it's really frustrating when you can't get classes and you know all the priority registration and everything so I really struggled with that so it took me four years I took Dr. Han's class I loved chemistry it was the first time I finally succeeded in a science class with her class and I loved it but anyway so I started the Long Beach City program in 2015 or Yes, 2015. Um, I absolutely loved Long Beach City's program. Obviously, I never, I never went to another school besides Long Beach City, so I didn't really have much to compare to. Um, but I loved it. All the professors were so helpful. Obviously, a lot of them scared me, but that's part of their job. And you know, they they really do prepare you for the real world. And there are so many times. And here I am, four years of being a nurse, and I still sometimes hear their voices in my head, where you know I remember distinctly them telling me things, and I still remember it to this day. So that's one thing that I can really say is Long Beach City really did prepare me. There was never a time where I was like, I never learned this or we never went over this. So that was something that I'm very thankful to say I went to Long Beach City for. Um, so I graduated in 2017 and all throughout nursing school, I said that nursing school was my boyfriend mm -hmm. because I didn't want to date. I was like, obviously, you know, the program is very competitive for a reason. So I was like, I cannot have distractions. So I did not date anyone. And then a week after I graduated, I met my husband. Mm -hmm. um, so we got married earlier this year. So anyways, that's a little a personal story. But um, so I graduated June of 2017 and then I met him. So I really delayed taking my exam for my license because I was having too much fun and finally had a life again because in nursing school, you do not have a life. Um, and then I currently still work at Hogue Hospital in Newport Beach. Um, so that was my first job that I got. Um, and then a little story about how I got the job. Again, it's very competitive to get a job in nursing. Um, a lot of it is online. And I got really frustrated by that because how do I set myself apart from someone else online? Because all we have is our resume. And it's like, okay, well, I put I was in the NSA at Long Beach City College, you know, I'm like, how do I set myself apart? So what I started doing was I started to go into hospitals, which obviously now during COVID, I don't think you can do, but um, I came here to Hogue and I just pressed the ninth floor and I said, I'm going to go up there and I'm going to talk to someone and see what I can do. So I came up here and looking back, I'm so embarrassed that I did this because all the nurses were sitting in the station and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so embarrassing. Anyway, so I walked up and I said, hi, I'm a new grad and I want to work here. <laughs> and everyone was like, well, what is she doing here? But needless to say, here I am. Um, but that's just my background. In nursing school, I was working in a restaurant. So all I know is meeting someone in person, talking to them, showing them your personality. So that's why. I did that here and it worked out. And so February will be four years that I've been here. Um, I love working here. I work on the cardiac unit. So um, like Otwana said, it's called telemetry, but I don't know if that means anything to you guys yet, but it's mainly cardiac patients, um, mainly with older adults. Um, I never really had like, you know, obviously 
I love being with children, but it really made me sad to think about sick children. So that's why I didn't do pediatrics because I just think I'd be too depressed. Um, and then eventually I think I might want to do labor and delivery, but I don't have children yet. So sometimes in nursing, you'll realize that being naive is kind of nice. Um, mm -hmm. So that's why I think maybe I'll go into labor and delivery after I have kids because I don't really want to know too much. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, that's where I'm at. Awesome. Thank you so much, Courtney. And I love these panel kind of things, even if it's a two person panel, because you see the different paths and the similarities and the difference, I think helps, helps all of us feel like, oh, my bit of identity matches with that passion you've had or that experience you've had. So um, awesome. Um, so I guess a second question for both of you, um, looking back on your journeys through your pre-nursing and your RNs and you both just finished online DSNs also, um, what kind of challenges arose as you went through there and what, what did you learn from them? You know, what kind of advice do you have to the people coming up, say five years behind you here in terms of like this challenge is normal and this is, you know, what I learned or how I got through it. Um, so Atwana, we'll bounce back to you, go ahead. Okay, uh, what challenges? So let's see, uh, we can break it down pre-nursing school, nursing school, and then, you know, after um, pre-nursing school challenges. I know um, that um, it, with applying to nursing school, they, they look at, they focus on your core uh, science classes. So you wanna make sure that you do very well in your sciences, that's your uh, anatomy, physio, uh, microbiology and chemistry. Um, they only take 40 students per semester, unless they change it to lower it. And then that 40 students, 50%, they're going to, it's a range from, I believe, like 3.5 to 4.0, 25% will be uh, 3.25 to 3.5. And then 25% of them will be from 3.0 to 3.25. So it's very important that you do very well in those core classes. You have to have a really good um, understanding of that stay up on your grades, um, pre-nursing, organization in nursing school is key. Uh, you, you have to be organized um, in nursing school and don't be afraid of those hard skills. Um, when you're in nursing school and, and in clinicals, that is your opportunity to perf not perfect it, but really understand it because you are um, supported. And when you are out in, in practicing with your license, you're expected to know it. Um, so I would say, don't be afraid of putting in that, uh, that urinary catheter or, catheter or the NG tube or putting in an IV. You seek those experiences. Um, it might be scary, but you need to seek those experiences. And as far as um, after nursing school, hi baby. After nursing school, um, I would say oh, before say hi. <laughs> so I would say after uh, before you even before you even uh, graduate, um, start doing your ACLS. It's not required for nursing school, but it's required when you're applying to a job. You already have to have that ACLS. You're it's um, as a requirement. Um, it was something else, you know always when you do really well in a class or when you have a really good um, preceptor or someone you're working with in nursing school, ask for a letter of recommendation from them right away. So you're collecting all these and that's preparing you for when you're applying for nursing um, jobs. Uh, before, you're, before you are graduating, you look at all these hospitals that you're um, anticipating applying to, already set up their mailing on their mailing list where you know when new jobs are coming. So you're getting these emails into your inbox. Oh, Cedar sinai is gonna have a new grad program opening up here. Uh, Long Beach Memorial is gonna have a new grad program opening up here. You already have all these dates coming and you can get those requirements put together before it even opens. So as soon as it comes in, you can submit your information there. So those are some tips that I have. Awesome. And right along with that, um, there's a good question in chat that maybe kind of goes with this. And then Courtney, I'll give you a chance to answer it too. Um, while you were studying in nursing school, did you ever feel like giving up? 
if so, how did you get over that obstacle? Oh yeah. Um, I feel like it's a haze now, but yeah, there were so many times like, oh, support group. You have to have like, find your people in nursing, um, in, in the nursing group. Like sometimes just to be honest, it will get clicky, um, but you're going to find your group of people and you guys have to be each other's rock. There were some times like I was literally like, <laughs> I don't want to scare people with crying. Like I didn't get any sleep because I was up. I'm a nervous person automatically, like just naturally. So like I was freaking out. I, I had, let's say a specific um, clinical instructor that would grill you. And I, I just, I did not want her to think that I didn't have everything together. Even if I did, my nerves will get in the way sometimes. So um, I would call and we would vent to each other. She would talk me off the ledge. I would talk her off the ledge sometimes. And you just really need that person that can uh, hold you accountable and that you can re like just really just be a mess with. So really just have your, uh, your support people. And then your family is support too. But when you're in nursing school, your family don't understand what you're going through. They can, they can tell you it's going to be okay. But then you're feeling like it's not going to be okay because you don't know what I'm going through. So you need, some, mm -hmm. you need someone who knows what you're going through to tell you, you know, be your voice of reason. So you need, you need uh, to find your, your people. Awesome. I love that. And I love that both. And like, we tend to think you need your school friends or your home family and right. you need mm -hmm. both and you need them yes. in different settings at yes, different moments. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> um, Courtney, go ahead. And um, now I forget where we had started. Oh, just kind of basically that same question. Um, mm -hmm. Challenges you faced and how you've overcome them. And then did you ever feel like giving up? How'd you move through that? Um, go ahead. Yes, yeah, so very well said, Otwana. Um, I could not agree more to start with. Yes, your study group is 100% everything. And here I am four years out, I still get together with them. We still talk. Even now we just talk about our jobs and, you know, a few of them have changed jobs and they've gotten, you know, different nursing um, jobs from going from the hospital to now an office setting. And, you know, that's the beauty of nursing is if you get bored in one area, you can go to a thousand other areas. Um, so my point is, yes, your study group is everything. Um, it did take me a little bit for semester to, you know, find out who I could trust, um, find out who was on my side. Sorry, I'm, <laughs> I'm in the hospital. I work tonight. So there, there was an overhead announcement. Anyways, um, so yes, my study group is everything. Uh, we would study together. We would support each other. If one of us didn't do well on an exam, obviously we would cry about it. We might go drink after the exam <laughs> together, all of the above. Um, we had huge potlucks every time that we studied for tests. You know, they were my family and they still are. So that was definitely a huge part of nursing school that I still really am thankful for. Um, and then as far as being prepared, so I'm already a very organized person. And I think that's one thing for those of you, if you are pre-nursing is, you know, make sure that you are good with time management. So um, even, you know, when I was in Dr. Hans class, I was working as much as I could because in nursing school, I know that your time is limited. So I tried to keep myself organized. Okay, I'm going to work out here because you got to get rid of your stress that way. Okay, I'm going to go to work at this time. Okay, I have to study on my break. Okay, then I'm going to, you know, all that. So definitely, if you can try to practice those techniques before nursing school, that would be great. Um, and that's another thing in nursing school is work and life balance. I'd say, you know, there were those people who all they did all day was just study. They were in their books. That's all they did. Well, I don't work that way. And I need to get outside and I need to have a little break, whether it's 10 minutes, 20 minutes, just walking outside because you do drive yourself crazy. And yeah, there are things of over preparing and, you know, you might make yourself sick trying to do that, but you know, it's really just trying to find that balance um, because there were a lot of people that, you know, they, they did make themselves sick during nursing school and some of them did have to wait a semester and come back again the following semester because they just couldn't handle it. So that's why, you know, that's why it is so competitive and that's why not everyone gets into the program right away. And it is a lot of work, but it's worth it. And it, I, there were times where I thought I wasn't gonna make it. And uh, if I'm being honest, I had diarrhea all the time in nursing school, that is personal, but oh my gosh, the stress of exams, it's, it is so much, um, but it's worth it. <laughs>
Um, and I just want to echo something both of you said. I think you said it, Courtney and Otwana, you kind of alluded to it, that work on your time management now. So then when you get to that next step, you're ready with it at the next step. And when you get your job, I mean, yes, you're not going to have exams anymore, but you're going to have other, it's still going to be stressful. You're still going to have to juggle. So that's something, you know, wherever you want to be in five years, like start working on the little things now. Start working on having those study groups now, and then you'll be even more ready to form good, healthy relationships um, in nursing school. Start working on time management now, and you'll be that much ahead um, on the next one. Um, we have about five minutes left here with our guests. Um, does anyone have any questions um, besides the one that we had in chat? Any questions you want to ask um, Atwana, Courtney, both of them, either of them? While people are submitting questions, I did want to say one more thing. Um, one thing that I did struggle with was trying to decide, because, you know, a lot of people go the West Coast University route. I don't know if any of you are familiar with that. You know, it's a very expensive school. It's a private school. But the good thing about going that route is that you get done faster. So all in all, I spent six years at Long Beach City College. That's a pretty long time to be at a junior college. But I graduated with no debt. So that is the trade-off is, yeah, I graduated in six years. And if I just did West Coast, it probably would have taken three years total, but I didn't have debt. Whereas I have coworkers who are still paying off $100,000 worth of nursing school because they went that route. Right. So I think, you know, everyone's situation is different. If you have a rich grandparent that will fit that bill for you, then go for it. But I didn't have that. So that's why I'm very glad that I went with Long Beach City and, um, but again, it's either you spend the six years or however long without debt or you do it faster and you have that loan to pay off, so. I like to piggyback on what Courtney just said. It's true, you either pay with your time or your money, but the reward of going to Long Beach, you hear that Long Beach is the standard, like Long Beach City College. Mm -hmm. uh, when I went to like uh, Long Beach Memorial or, um, what, what is it, St. Mary's, um, they like Long Beach, Long Beach City students a lot because we work, um, we work with the, um, the simulation. PCAs. Yeah, we do everything and we don't delegate a lot of the work to, um, you know, the, well, you learn delegation, but you also learn their <laughs> skills also just in the event that they're not around. Um, so, the hospitals like they love Long Beach City um, nurses. We we have a reputation, and um, it's great to know that you come from a school of quality. Awesome, thank you, and thank you both for or Courtney for speaking to kind of the money piece of it. And then Otwani, you make an excellent point. Some people have more time than money. Some have more money than time, and it's yeah. really different for everybody. Right. Um, but I, I could talk to you each for five, 10 more minutes about how did you pay for all this with time and money both. Yeah. Um, but to the students in the audience, don't be shy to ask the money questions. Um, and even if you wanna throw something into chat that we could reply back out to um, later, you know, how did you pay for it? How did you decide? Both um, of our nurses here got BSNs through Cal State Universities locally. So um, I'm a huge, talk about money it's not an awkward thing it's like Courtney said it's hundreds of thousands of dollars sometimes so don't be shy to have those um conversations and ask people you know what are my options so, um any final questions for either of our guests before we transition to our next guest looks like we have one more in chat here um interview questions you were presented with when applying for jobs so if you just have like a minute or so each of you to talk about that interview process or questions. I can go first since I just recently had mm -hmm. a couple of them. Okay. Um, they, they, a lot of the new grad, I applied specifically to RN residency programs because my, um, my ADM program where I learned all my skills was a little ways away. So um, I wanted to refresh and be supported as I transitioned. So they, they're asking a lot of behavioral questions like, um, Tell me a time where you had to um, work through conflict or um, communication. Tell me a time where you had to communicate something to a team or work with the interpersonal, um, interpersonal, inter, excuse me, inter uh, collaborative team. Um, they want to know like why should we pick you or um, 
what was the last one that I just recently, um, why whatever hospital you want to go to, they asked me why little, um, little company of Mary. And I needed to be able to tell them the specifics of their, of their hospital. So it's a really good idea to like do your research on the hospital. What are their core beliefs, their mission, vision, core values, uh, what accolades have they received? Um, you need to do your research on them so you can let them know, you know how good they are. Um, they, they're going to eat that up. You need to be able to tell them that. So those are a few questions I can remember off the top of my head. Thank you. Um, Courtney, do you have anything to add to that? Um, well, I used good old YouTube to find out what are typical nursing questions that they ask in interviews. And I'm not kidding you. During my interview, they asked every single question that I listened to in this YouTube video. Um, and it's really just the basic things as far as what's your five-year plan. Like Otwana said, you know, when was the time that you faced conflict? How did you resolve that? Um, are you going to be comfortable delegating things to other staff members? Things like that. I was really surprised. I thought that they would ask questions about, you know, medication or, you know, clinical nursing things. They didn't ask any of that. Um, and even now, you know, that I work with these people, I asked them, I said, you know, I was so surprised during my interview. You didn't really ask me, like nursing medication type questions they said well we don't care about that stuff we're going to teach you and make sure you know all that stuff what we care about is who you are as a person and that we can trust you as an employee so that was one thing i was really surprised about because you know in nursing school they terrify you that they're going to ask you you know medication math and whatever else and they didn't ask any of that so i think it's more about who you are as a person and your values and your your uh, skills all right. Awesome. Thank you both so much for that. There is one more question in chat, but I'm going to leave that if either of you have a moment to reply to that, because I want to move on to our next guest. But can we all virtually really ever <laughs> applaud our guests here? Thank you so much, both of you, for coming. Um, oh. Congratulations on the milestones you've passed and um, excited to see where you go next. So Thank you. stay in touch, please. You know, yes. I'll probably hunt you down again. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Thank, Thank you. No problem. Bye. Bye. All right, and then with that, now we get our second um, perspective on someone who began also as a Long Beach City College um, nurse. We're going to transition to um, our next guest, Ardell Avellino. Hello, Ardell. Let's see, can, I don't know if your audio is working. Go ahead and speak Can up. you hear me? Yeah, perfect. Okay, perfect. Um, would you like to introduce yourself or do you want me to introduce you? I, feel like I, you I can do it. I'll take it from here. It <laughs> is right. so nice to hear from two uh, fellow alumnus there from Long Beach City College. And no question, bar none, Long Beach City College RN program is the best. I actually graduated from that program 19 years ago, May of uh, uh, 2002. And I actually taught in the RN program for uh, close to 10 years, teaching uh, med surge, intensive care, as well as the uh, leadership rotation. But immediately after I graduated from the two-year RN program, I was employed at St. Mary Medical Center, where, where I'm still uh, currently employed in the intensive care unit. And so I spent about two and a half years at the bedside and there was an opportunity for a supervisory role on the night shift, which I applied to and received. So I became the ICU supervisor. I uh, subsequently took the role, a, a combined role as an ICU supervisor as well as house supervisor. Then I transitioned to quality as the hospital quality director. Then I became the associate uh, administrator then I became the compliance officer for the hospital. And then now currently in my current role as the senior director of operations overseeing uh, 15 departments in the hospital. And so I completed my two year RN degree at Long Beach City College, received my uh, bachelor's in nursing from Holy Names University, uh, which we had a partnership with uh, then Catholic Healthcare West received my master's in healthcare administration from Cal State Long Beach, and then currently completing my doctorate in nursing executive leadership at Baylor University. And so outside of my uh, professional 
uh, career. In terms of my involvement with the community, I am the primary preceptor for uh, nursing administration majors at Cal State Long Beach, as well as healthcare administration students. I am the incoming board chairman for the Goodwill Industries in Southern California. I am a board member, advisory board member for the federal prison, Terminal Island. I also sit as board of governors at Long Beach City College Foundation and also in the advisory board at Cal State Long Beach. So that is a brief overview of my career trajectory. And I'd be happy to answer any questions anyone may have. Well, you know, I used to teach nursing school, so I'm very good at <clears throat> asking questions <laughs> from students. Uh, there was a question earlier about um, hospitals requiring RNs to have BSN or an ADN. So <clears throat> that is typically uh, organizations that are designated as magnet hospitals by the American Credentialing S uh, Center require a portion of their uh, nursing workforce to be BSN prepared. And so most of uh, BSN uh, graduates are preferred by those um, uh, hospital institutions. Uh, but I have to tell you that uh, St. Mary Medical Center is a fan of Long Beach City College uh, students. We actually have uh, quite a number of uh, Long Beach City College grads here in our organization. And when you look at the difference between the two-year education and the four-year education, the two-year education has um, great emphasis in preparing the students to be uh, clinically inclined so that when they are discharged or they graduate from the two-year program, that they're able to competently um, perform the duties of a nurse clinically. Whereas a bachelor's program is more focused on uh, theory. So they have more exposure in uh, management, uh, in areas of uh, evidence-based research, um, more of that type of um, topics and environment. But I uh, clearly uh, advocate for everyone to um, advance their education. The more education you have, the more knowledgeable you become, and the more marketable uh, you become in the workforce as well. So there's a question in chat. Thank you for that, like distinguishing between the degrees. I know that's a challenge for a lot of our nursing students. Um, what does your occupation entail? So I guess kind of from the healthcare administration side, which you've worked in a, several different administrative roles, um, what does that look like day to day? Um, and I guess also I'm curious to how you knew when you wanted to go do something different, because it sounds like you've pivoted through, you know, the clinical, the teaching, some of the administration. So what does your day to day look like? And how did you make those decisions to transition from one role to another? Thank you. I've, I've always been enthused in the uh, leadership capacity. And so during my high school year, I was a, uh, a leader, uh, a, a president of my class. And then I was very active also in my co college years at Long Beach City College. And so currently in my role as the Senior Director of Operations, I oversee 15 uh, ancillary and clinical departments, including our ambulatory services. Um, adjunct to that, I'm also uh, in charge of the Infection Control Department, the Regulatory and Accrediting Department, the Risk Management Department, and the Patient Safety Department. So I have a combination of 15 managers and directors who report to me. So as the um, uh, one of the senior executives in the organization, I have strategic and operational um, oversight uh, to make sure that we meet all the regulatory quality metrics as well as performance metrics uh, to make sure that the organization is financially viable. And so, 
my day is um, always busy. I generally ar arrive at work at seven o'clock in the morning and uh, I review my agenda for the day. And then quickly after that, I make it a point to go to the units of the hospital. And so I start from the seventh floor and then all the way down to the emergency department. It is my belief that as a leader, you don't lead from behind the desk. It's very important that you exhibit transformational leadership by making sure that you engage with staff members, you communicate with them, you're visible as a leader, you identify any barriers that they need to re remove so that they can effectively do their job and uh, being open, communicative to them, transparent and supportive. Thank you for that. It looks like we have a couple more questions um, in the chat. Um, maybe the most recent one. Do you recommend nursing students to work after obtaining their BSN or to finish all the education requirements such as nurse practitioner, doctor of nurse practitioner, and then start working? You really need to have a combination of practical experience augmented and supplemented by uh, higher education. You can have the most highest degree that you can achieve but if you don't have the practical experience, then it does not make you very relevant or marketable. So um, it's important for you to be able to balance both. And I've been able to uh, do that all throughout my career, being a, a, a full-time um, employee as well as a full-time student. Um, but you have to be very disciplined. And you have to make the determination and, and commitment. And so there are certain sacrifices that, that we do in life. And I've learned that with those uh, sacrifices, there's always good yields uh, and good outcomes. Um. Let's see. So to kind of follow on to that, um, when did you start working? I assume like in a clinical setting is the question there. Um, or did you work through school? I, I, how did you juggle the work and the study and how did those kind of two go together? Right. So during my two year at Long Beach City College, I actually worked at uh, Long Beach Unified School District at Lakewood High School. And so I was working full time until I reached the third semester when the schedule became a little bit more demanding. And so I had to scale back and focus on school to finish that. Uh, during that time, my time uh, after graduating, I was um, interviewed prior to my graduation and um, was offered a position here at St. Mary Medical Center. I actually got two offers, one here at St. Mary Medical Center and then one over at Long Beach uh, Memorial. And so I was a little bit uh, perplexed. I was living at home and I went home and I asked my mom if um, whether I should work at St. Mary or um, Long Beach Memorial. And she quickly said, well, you're a good Catholic boy. You're going to uh, work at St. Mary Medical Center. And so the rest was history. Um, but then I was able to manage um, uh, studying full time and working uh, full time initially and then scaling back. And then with my bachelor's, master's and doctorate um, all throughout, I've been a full time employee as well as a, a full time student. Thank you for that. Um, any other questions? I see some in chat, but if you want to turn a microphone on and speak up a question, go for it too. What a shy group. <laughs> I see Spencer, Marie, Ashlyn, Victoria, Emily, Adriana, Brandon. You teach like I do. I'm like, well, I'm not shy to call on you. I noticed that you're there. 
Um, what about, I don't know if you have anything to say, um, I was telling the other nurses earlier um, to talk about the finances of paying for things. Um, so with the different degrees and things that you've worked through, um, do you have any advice for students as they're navigating the financial side of their decisions and opportunities? So I was very fortunate to have a supportive family that um, invested in education. And uh, adjunct to that, I, I did receive some scholarships through the uh, foundation at Long Beach City College. My bachelor's degree was fully paid by the organization. My master's degree, I paid for it um, at $15,000. Uh, $10,000 was paid by our hospital foundation. And then my uh, doctoral degree, uh, of course, uh, now if you've got uh, a decent earning, uh, you don't qualify for a lot of things. So it's uh, coming from my bank account. But we also have a very uh, generous uh, employee tuition uh, reimbursement uh, program. And so every year employees are uh, afforded $5,000 uh, towards uh, higher education. And so I've been able to um, access uh, those resources. But all in all, I have zero um, debt when it comes to um, funding my education. Thank you. Um, any other questions? You know, I get this question um, a lot of times. Why did you go to nursing? And so a lot of it was uh, influence uh, coming from um, a family background of medical professionals. Um, some people and a lot of people go into the medical field because of the um, financial and lucrative nature of the profession, right? But I always make an emphasis to say, especially to my nursing students, that if you're going to enter the field of nursing or healthcare for money, you're in it for the wrong reason. In my view, you really have to have passion and compassion in what you do. And if you have passion in what you do and you love what you do, you're going to do great at it. The financial rewards will follow. But if you're going to go into nursing because you're earning $42 an hour, that's how much we're paying our new grads now, $42 an hour, but you don't love your job or you're not passionate about it, your patients are going to be miserable because you're miserable. And so have passion and compassion in what you do, in whatever uh, sector of, of healthcare you're going to enter. Thank you. Um, I want to bounce back. I missed a question from Sarahi earlier. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Sorry. Um, they say, I'm not an RN, but want to complete my BSN to become a nurse practitioner midwife. Is that still through an RN program or would that be a different program? Well, rudimentary, you need to have your RN in order for you to um, proceed for a BSN or an NP or a DNP. Okay, yeah, because I heard something about like a three-year bridge program or something where you can do it all together. Um, uh -huh. So that particular um, setup, Let's say, for example, you have a bachelor's in psychology or bachelor's in chemistry or bachelor's in communication. There are, a br there are bridge programs. Um, one of them is uh, Cal State Dominguez. I know UCLA has one. Um, University of Azusa has a program where you can earn your RN and your master's degree at the same time. And so in nursing, you have various routes that you can take. You can either do the clinical route, you can do the management administrative route, you can do the clinical route, you can do the education route, you can do the research route. There are so many facets in nursing that you can get into. Thank you so much. You're welcome.
Um, I'll put a couple links in there, Sarahi, in a second um, that relate to some of those master's entry kind of programs. Um, another question, um, do you have any tips for the interview process? You sit on the other side of some of those interviews probably. So um, do you have tips for the interview process? You know, the two gals uh, covered some essential basics. You really need to do your own research to learn about the organization. They are, as a, an, when I interview, my expectation is that you've conducted that. Uh, that you know the mission and vision, you know the demographics, you know our, our the services that 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 we give. Um, hospitals are now uh, graded publicly. There are scorecards that you can access. CMS Hospital Compare will uh, showcase the hospital's uh, mortality rates, uh, core measures, patient experience scores. Uh, Leapfrog organization has uh, grading um, for hospitals, and so it is impressive when uh, interviewers are able to articulate that during the interview process. So be aware, uh, do your research, uh, dress well, uh, and, and, and really prepare. And then another question, what did you teach in the RN program? I think you mentioned it at the beginning, but um, what kind of classes did you teach in our RN program at LBCC? Right. So I taught the uh, medical surgical uh, rotation, the ICU critical care rotation, as well as the capstone course, which is the leadership preceptorship rotation. Thank you. Um, anyone else? Other questions? Um, I, I'm going to circle back to one of my favorites, which is the the adversities that you've faced and ever feeling like quitting or you were in over your head or things like that. Um, have you had those experiences where you're like, oh, man, this is too much? And how have you moved through them? You know, it's it's really inherent, especially in an executive role. I've put out fires left and right. And a lot of complex, complicated situations are presented to us um, as a healthcare executive. But you are able to respond to those uh, with your experience, uh, being agile and uh, always leading with grace under pressure. As a leader, it's very important to have a high uh, level of emotional intelligence. Um, you cannot overreact. Uh, you cannot yell at people. Uh, you can't get anxious or, uh, or excited. You really have to um, showcase competency and the ability to uh, manage uh, stressful situations effectively. And so I think I got that training early on in my uh, career as an intensive care unit nurse, where I took care of trauma patients, stab wound patients, gunshot wound patients, open heart surgery patients, uh, kidney transplant patients. And so those were situations and in, in patient cases where uh, they were very critical and sometimes they uh, uh, could turn, you know, sour uh, very quickly. And so you have to act quickly and, and competently and, and ensure that you are able to deliver safe uh, patient care. And so uh, I think bottom line to answer that com combination of education and your experience uh, allows you to um, remedy complicated uh, situations and, and deal complicated situations. Thank you for that. Um, it's kind of that both and thing, right? We have to have the, the two pieces. Um, there's a couple more questions that have come in. Um, one was, do you oversee labor and delivery? And another kind of related was as an RN, what was your favorite department to work in and why? Um, so 
Sure. Um, I'm, I'm currently uh, acting in the capacity as the chief uh, nursing officer, um, in addition to my uh, other role. So um, the labor and delivery generally reports to the chief nurse, uh, but I oversee the uh, OB clinic uh, in the organization. And so when she comes back next week from her vacation, I'll be turning over labor and delivery in her area. So she oversees the labor and delivery inside um, the hospital and the outpatient OB clinic uh, reports to me. As an RN, what was your favorite department to work in and why? I'm an adrenaline junkie. I like challenges. I like stressful situations. And so the intensive care unit was uh, the best fit for me and an area that I was very passionate about and an area that I'm still passionate about. And then we have, thank you. We have another one here. What are some of the privileges that MDs have that nurse practitioner midwives do not have at St. Mary Medical Center? Well. MDs certainly have advanced training, right? And so the nurse practitioners, some of them, depending on the organization's rules and bylaws, require them to work under the auspices of a medical uh, doctor. And so there are still limitations, although uh, nurse practitioners uh, our master's prepared individuals, uh, most now have transitioned master's um, nursing programs into a uh, DNP program. Uh, but bottom line is the MD role still requires a higher uh, training and education, uh, whereas uh, nurses still have limitations. There was a recent um, rule in the state of California that is allowing advanced nurse practice um, nurses uh, to have a little bit more independence. But there's certainly um, more latitude in the scope of practice between a, uh, a nurse practitioner or a, uh, a, a generally trained nurse. But bottom line, MDs uh, will have more uh, privileges and the ability to treat patients. And then we have a specific follow-up to that. Can nurse practitioner midwives assist in cesarean deliveries at St. Mary, for example? Yes. Um, all right. Well, we're just about out of time here. Um, and we so appreciate you taking time at the end of your long and busy day to talk to us. Um, do you have any final negative advice, words of wisdom, anything else you'd like to wrap up um, and share? Oh, we have one more question. Marie, yeah, go ahead, Marie, and ask your question. That's more important. Hi, so um, I have a question. Right now, I am taking my prerequisites at LBCC to get into the nursing program, and I'm also in a program for medical assistance. What do you think is the best like route to take to go from an MA to an RN? Should I still because I, I do want to get my BSN eventually, should I just keep going with like school? Or do you think I should just for my MA, try to find a bridge to RN? What do you want to do five years from now? What do you what do you see yourself? I see myself being an RN. Okay. And then you should put all of your energy and effort into that. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I'd like to offer my office number to everyone, 562-491-9814. I have a passion for mentoring people. I have been very fortunate in my journey to have been mentored by exceptional uh, mentors. And so I always try to pay forward. And so I uh, welcome 
uh, any question, follow up questions um, that you may have, or um, you know, mentorship in the nursing or healthcare route. Thank you so much for all the information. Um, I personally, you know, I'm uh, an aspiring nurse practitioner, midwife. Um, I'm currently a medical assistant slash phlebotomist. Um, and you I ask all work... the questions, huh? <laughs> that was you. Now I know who it is. I just, I have big dreams. You know, I, I was contemplating which um, career I wanted. I was between an MD, but then I settled given everything going on on nurse practitioner. I just want to be able to help people. You know, I want to get out there. I currently work with Dr. Khalifa. Um, uh, I know and, Dr. Khalifa. <laughs> and he knows me. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So, I mean, we've, me and him have been sticking together for the past, you know, since I think a week before we opened the clinic up in Long Beach. Um, so and we've been a tiny but mighty staff, you know, um, and it's been uh, such an, you know, like amazing experience. Like, you know, so basically that's why I'm just full of questions. I, you know, look forward to to just taking the right path, you know, and so, so far, I feel like I have like everything planned out. Um, I just wanted to make sure, you know, the privileges that a nurse practitioner or midwife has versus an MD, you know what I mean? Like, um, are we able to, like, like you said, we are able to assist in cesareans, you know, if I were to go into like a different specialty, such as cardiology or something else, are we also able to assist in surgery or is that, you know, um, uh, so there's only applicable? Yeah, there's a there's a lot of advanced training that you have to receive to, you know, there's a designation called first assist, if you want to take that, that route, and you can also be okay. a, a surgery nurse, right. But, okay. you know, in general, when you when you ask the question about can, you know, the nurse is, assist during the C section delivery. Yeah, you're present in, in, in that setting. But I'd be happy to speak to you offline. Uh, it sounds like you have uh, a lot more questions and I'd be happy to set up some time where we can um, go over them. Thank you so much. I was able to get your phone number, so I will definitely be reaching out to you. <laughs> no problem. And, um, you know, you um, asked the question, you know, what are some parting war words? We are experiencing an unprecedented time um, in the world. And so, we need healthcare workers. And um, I firmly believe that um, healthcare workers are uh, the extension of, of, of God's healing hands. And it is really a great profession um, to be in. And so I, I say that as a clinician, as a registered nurse by background, and as uh, an educator, uh, a, a community leader, and also as a healthcare administrator. Thank you so much for your time and your generous um, advice, wisdom, and making yourself available as a mentor to our students. Um, I, I can't say enough, thank you. Um, and I know you've been a, a passionate supporter as a, an instructor and as a part of the Long Beach City College Foundation. So um, thank you for showing up tonight for us. Um, and, and you know, I would never say no to you. <laughs> well, now I know that. So you're, <laughs> you're, you're on my list. <laughs> I, I really enjoy, you know, the last session that I joined, uh, the, um, the spring session, I actually had four students uh, call me for a follow-up. And so there's one in particular that I'm still uh, closely uh, guiding. And so I, I really enjoy doing things like this. Thank you so very much. Um, so if everyone can applaud real fake yellow hands in the corner, whatever. <laughs> um, I'll be back in touch again, probably as we head into our spring event, the bigger event, but uh, it's great to have you in the small setting here. Thanks so much for answering everyone's questions. No problem. You guys be safe. Take care. Take care. Have a good night. Thank you. Have a good night.